Well, the New South Wales Premier, Barry O'Farrell, might be accused of being a do-nothing Premier, but when it comes to not wanting a second Sydney airport, well, perhaps he's right. What? 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 Airport. Here are some facts to support his case. In 2010, 35.6 million passengers used Sydney Airport. But of those, only a third were international passengers. What? What? The rest, 24.2 million passengers, were domestic travellers. Of those, 7.6 million travelled to and from Melbourne, 4.3 million came or went from Brisbane, 2.3 million travelled between Sydney and the Gold Coast, and 1.1 million went between Sydney and Canberra. If all of those people got on a Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney, Gold Coast, Brisbane rail link, that'd be 15.3 million people. Even if only half of them decided not to take the plane and take the train instead, then it would cut use of Sydney Airport by 21%. And as a bonus, there would be effective competition against a monopoly that charges us $52 to park for just four hours. What? 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 And another bonus, it would reduce traffic growth on our roads and hopefully cut road deaths that although they're reducing are still way too high. Plus it's more efficient, particularly with air fuel going up in price all the time. Fuel accounted for 10% of Qantas expenses in 2000, now it's up to 25% and even then it would be higher still if staff costs weren't also so high. For many airlines, more than a third of their total operating cost comes from air fuel. What up, we are? More? More? Yeah. In fact, it's got so bad that Qantas has resorted to using cooking oil. And if we've reached peak oil, as some people say we have, then the cost of air fuel is only going to get higher. So what about the train? Well, the US Transportation Department reckons that intercity rail is a little bit cheaper than flying, but quite a lot cheaper than taking the car. So a new fast rail link would cut airport traffic, but could also stop long distance driving that pollutes the atmosphere and will start costing us more and more. The latest figures from the government estimate a high speed rail journey from Sydney to Melbourne would cost just $99 to $197 one way. The government's 2011 High Speed Rail Study, Phase 1, says that the 1,600 kilometres of new standard gauge double track would carry 54 million passengers a year by 2036. Way more than the number of people using Sydney Airport. And it puts the cost of the Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane link at between $61 billion and $108 billion in 2011 money. That's enough to buy several national broadband networks. So is Barry right that this is the way to go? Well, by comparison, the cost of building a new Sydney airport is just $15 billion. So maybe the airport is the cheapest option after all. But there again, maybe Barry's right. Maybe we don't need to do anything. Sydney Airport handles 36 million passengers. Heathrow Airport has the same number of runways and manages to carry 66 million passengers a year. And just like Sydney, it has a night curfew as well. So Barry O'Farrell is right. Sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at all. Again. What? Waiting for the train that never comes.